Welcome to the Project Management Nation, where we discuss all things project. Today we're going to continue our discussion on ChatGPT, which is an artificial intelligence uh, software that is available to everyone. It's, it's free with some restrictions uh, if you sign up for an account, but we've been playing with it in some of our prior videos to see what it can do for project managers. Today, we're going to continue that discussion and we are going to look at what it can do for scheduling. Can ChatGPT help us to schedule things? I hope you enjoy this. So as was stated, today we're going to talk about scheduling and what ChatGPT can do for scheduling. So here is the basic ChatGPT window. You can see the at the bottom is uh, the input. What I've done is I have created a list of um, tasks that need to get done here. I'll show you what those look like. I, and I gave ChatGPT some specifics and we're going to see what the output is. So we are, the project is uh, opening a new office in Poland to be completed by May 1st. And can we do it on time by May 1st, given the following tasks? Task one, we need to set up a legal entity. And I gave it some parameters. It starts on the 15th and takes two months. Task two, find a new office space to move into. Also starts on the 15th and takes two and a half months. Send job uh, descriptions out to new employees. That starts March 1st and takes one week. Task four, hire new employees, starts after task three and takes six weeks. So I built in a dependency. And task five, set up new office in uh, set up the new office and employees in the finance and HR systems to support them. That has to take place after the legal entity is set up and it takes four weeks. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to hit enter. Here's the feedback, it's thinking. Let's see what its response is. Probably a lot of uh, traffic right now. I have uh, started the free plan uh, and it's, it can be restricted uh, due to um, traffic. So difficult to say with certainty whether your project to open an office in Poland will be completed by May 1. So task one, set up a legal entity, starts the 15th and takes two months, ending on April 15th. So it's just kind of regurgitating back the facts, though it gave it a uh, gave it an end date. So now it's talking about the office space. So it ends on April 30th. So that is the tightest of them, but I don't have a dependency on that, so we should be okay. Send out job descriptions. Starts March 1. It takes one week, so that's not a major dependency. Task four, hire new employees. Starts after task three. Again, it's more regurgitating out what I said so, but it gave it an end date, April 19th. So setting up uh, in the finance and HR systems. So we did give a constraint that it has to happen after task one. It takes four weeks. So that should be April 30th, no, April 15th, sorry. So based on the above estimates, it appears that task four may extend beyond the May 1 deadline. Interesting. I wonder why it says that because it has it ending on April 19th. Additionally, there may be unforeseen circumstances. True. So it's not a, it's, it's trying to account for risk and say that everything has to go perfect um, for this to happen. I love how it refers to itself as I. I would suggest closely monitoring the progress of each task and reassessing the timeline as needed. Okay, so that's what it finished with. So it didn't that didn't tell us a lot. Let's uh, let's ask it. Let's let's change a parameter. Um, what 
what happens to the Poland office opening project if task five takes two weeks. So it should remember what happened before. It's supposed to be intelligent like that. So let's see. So if task five, setting up the new office in the finance and HR system takes two weeks instead of four, the estimated completion. So it's completely recalculating the project and it's moving a lot faster also, which is great. It was moving so slowly. So here it's spitting out the new dates and two weeks ending on April 29th. Based on the revised timeline, it appears that task five would be completed ahead of schedule, which could potentially allow for the project to be completed by May 1st deadline. So it also talks about the, the challenges. So that's great. It's actually able to recalculate our project schedule based on a new input. So now we're gonna see if it's smart enough um, and whether it knows what a critical path is. Um, so let's ask it. Calculate the critical path for the Poland office project. Let's see if it's good enough to do that. The critical path of the project is a sequence of tasks that must be completed on schedule for the project. Okay, so it's giving us a definition. Oh, but here it is. In the case of the Poland office project, the critical path can be calculated as follows. So task one, task five, and task two. Okay. So it's, it's telling us task one, five, and two are the critical paths. These have to be completed on schedule in order for the project to be completed on time. Three and four are not on the critical path. Okay, I think that that's pretty smart. Um, I love the intelligence of that. Now, I don't think it's realistic to take an entire, you know, 100 line, Gantt style list of tasks and put them into this, though you probably could, maybe I'll try that in a different video. But just based on these five simple tasks and the sequencing and the dependencies, it's done really quite an admirable job. Uh, I am impressed by ChatGPT and what it's able to do for projects. I hope you found this interesting uh, and uh, I hope you're finding ways to incorporate ChatGPT into your project practice. All right, I, I hope that you enjoyed the content of that video and that it was useful uh, for you. Please like and subscribe. Also, please put in the comments, any uh, comments you have, any thoughts, expand the ideas that I presented. Um, also, if you've got ideas for other videos, please let me know. Right now, I'm gonna take a, a second to do a shameless plug. A couple of years ago, I wrote a book. I was fortunate enough to have it picked up by a publisher. It's called The MBA Distilled for Project and Program Professionals. And it talks about uh, the experience that I had getting my MBA while being a project and program manager. It covers all of the core MBA courses from uh, corporate strategy to finance, accounting, economics, and it takes the learnings from the MBA program and applies it to our profession. Uh, I really enjoyed writing the book. I think there's a lot of uh, great um, uh, skills that we can apply to our profession in it. My favorite chapter, though, is the very last chapter. And if you are a project or program professional and you're thinking about getting your MBA, you're going to want to read that chapter. It will help you to decide. I believe in the power of the MBA and that it can be a real career booster, but not for everybody. And I talk through all of my logic as to why. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video.